we are here. Today we are at the Monroeville Mall for the Living Dead weekend convention, Dawn of the Dead and Creep Show thing. Uh, say hi. Show my shirt. Look at my shirt, guys. Zombie baby. <laughs> I got this one. We're trying to figure out where we're supposed to go, though. I have no idea. It's actually a pretty big turnout. There's a lot of people that are here. So, you ready for the tour? Oh, God, I'm like super close to your face. <laughs> Alright, so we figured out where we are supposed to get the tickets and everything. Wait. And we actually made it on time in your because I knew where to park. Oh my god. I kind of... I think you have to go to the Cinemark. No, it's just it's funny, the opposite direction. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I would have still got us here eventually. Because <laughs> you're going to follow along in your program, pretty much like a comic book almost. You go across the top, and then next row, next row. And I'll be showing you all these points. Tour. And they come around the parking lot and they drive all around here and they park their van around here and this is where they battle the zombies before they shoot the lock off and they enter through those large glass doors which do open still to load in bigger things in the mall. Um, also in the movie, this spot is notable because it's the uh, second place that they use a truck to block an entrance. They back up the truck along in here lock these doors, and they pull up uh, that garage truck right here. Peter brings the truck along to the side, right. and this is where Roger gets bit in between the trucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the zombies are always at the doors. <laughs> <laughs> This tour literally just started. It's already really cool seeing all the spots. He's geeking out. I am. I'm like a little, a little fan girl right now. <laughs> ah. I'm just ran into that. Well, what I did was I have an original ball brochure, and it has the layout of all the stores, and it shows all the same stores you see in the movie. So then I took a current mall layout directory. And I compared them, and I have my own personal map, if need be, that I can refer to. But I've done this tour so many times, I don't really need to look at it anymore. <laughs> and I have the original name of the store on my little map, and then the store name now, and where every, all my little points take place that I have to go through on this store. Can I get a copy of that? No, you can't. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> going <laughs> about all over the mall. They come to a point up top. You see a few of the heroes oh. coming, and they stand there in front of Foxmore. Foxmore was right there. So they all come and look around at the aftermath of all the zombies laying about. And it's over. So then they gotta go clean it up after that. They would have been still right there. Where that guy is. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. You know how to pose, right? You know what Flyboy does, that's right. Uh, you Ready? <laughs> you are trained well. Perfect. So I'm pretty sure we're going back to the boiler room, I'm not sure. But it's cool because it's all still like the original like brown and white. Yeah, exactly. I took a picture with that little kid that looked like Flyboy. I think. Did I take a video too? No, just a picture, I think. I don't know. Well, I mean, don't know because it'll be before this. So now it just sound like a big dummy. So the next part of the tour is we're actually going to go into the uh, boiler room, which is cool because like they still have like the original dials and stuff on the wall. It looks like it hasn't been touched since the 70s, which is awesome. It hasn't been updated, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 Alright, so... Oh, this is so cool. We're in here. We're in here unsupervised. Are we supposed to be in this actual room? Yeah. But they have the original control panel and everything. From the movie. That's so cool. How about a little music? Might cover the noise we make. <laughs> As you see, that's the control center you see in the movie. Come closer, I gotta show you something. I, I just noticed something in the back. Come closer, you guys see. Come closer.
Keys to the kingdom! <laughs> Keys to the kingdom! Yeah! What do you know? 26 upper? 26 lower. <laughs> Coming through these back hallways, sometimes I feel a little lost, but you know, I, I saw some sort of passageway out of here. Ductwork, some kind of, uh, you know, something like that. I saw it on a map. Oh, wow. It's exactly what you see in the movie. Each one of you gets a copy of this as you exit the boiler room. Here's where Flyboy chases around that security guard zombie, <laughs> and then shoots him with like the 1800 rounds that are in his revolver. Misses every single time. Across. So Steven would have been right over here. The zombie would have been right here, and they see each other. And in the shot with the zombie, you see this square machinery. So then this is what happens. Let me just reenact it. I'll be Steven on the other end, and the zombie would be here. <laughs> So that was really cool, going back here seeing the boiler room, they gave us one of the schematics from in the movie, so that was pretty cool. Oh, I just hit my elbow! So this is where the original J.C. Penney's was, from the movie. So this is where that zombie goes up the escalator. So he just sort of wanders on. <laughs> Imagine anyone that has no idea what this is about. <laughs> so it's like, what the hell is wrong with that guy? <laughs> They're like, why are these people filming him? <laughs> This one. I'm gonna do the same thing. So he's looking at the right. Those main doors open. There's gonna be a thousand zombies in here. That'll take the heat off. And this is the exact same model for what was up here as the movie. Oh yeah, because the whole thing is like the exact same model I had to have. So in the direct center of the this courtyard is where the clock tower was. That's where the clock tower was, right there in the middle of that courtyard. Because the majority of it wasn't working anymore. And the interesting thing you have the clock it was built in place here when the mall opened in 1968. And there were puppets that would come out and enter either the half hour or on the hour. And there were, I think, 13 of them. And each one represented a different nationality of people who live in the Pittsburgh area. Like there would be an Italian puppet maybe or a Polish puppet or some such thing. All the different puppets, and then maybe on every uh, six hours, all of them would come out at once. I'll tell you what it is now. Remember the movie? They locked off the first set of doors downstairs where we started, and then they drive the car back through the mall, but remember, that was downstairs. This is upstairs. They actually drive the car down this hallway, and this is the second set of doors that they locked. Well, that's what we mentioned because obviously these do not connect. That was downstairs. So the car comes down the hallway, parks here. Stephen comes out of the back of the hatchback. He stands here. Peter comes out of the car next to him. And they stand next to each other. And Peter looks at him and says, We'll get it all locked off and we're going on a hunt. <laughs> 
There it is. Yes. There's actually right there where they're, that we were just at. So I stopped here for one particular reason. At the time of the filming of the movie, this was known as North American Amusements, and this is where they played all the arcade games. Oh. Just the ones you see in the movie. Oh, yeah. oh, old, old ones. Oh. 70s arcade games. There's too many arcade ones. Oh, interesting. Here, but this is where the bank was. And beside the bank was the Brown Derby that you see them run in front of all throughout the movie as they go from their uh, sort of uh, hideout, you know, the hallway, which is down there. And they're always running through this area to JCPenney's, like I said, which is where the movie theater was. So they were always running up and down this hallway to JCPenney's. Ah, okay. From their uh, sort of uh, hideout, you know, hallway to JCPenney's. You also see, okay, when they have the speech, which I told you is over here, I'll go reenact that in a second. They have there's no, the No More Room in Hell speech. They're standing there, and they show a view of them walking up, and then a view of them that looks like what they're seeing in front of them, but what they would have actually seen is the top of the ice skating rink and some stores and stuff. So the view that they show you is actually this view here. They're up high on a ladder, and the view is supposed to be their viewpoint is this view into the mall. And you see this whole view of them coming up during the credits and such and all through the movie. The zombies coming up during the end credits. One of the zombies is Denise Kiss and she's appearing here this weekend as a guest. You see her in the credits coming up, just holding on to the railing coming up. You see this view. This is the spot where Peter gives his speech. The heroes come walking up with their fur coats. Like I said, there was a scaffolding with the cameras and you get that shot of them walking up. And if you watch the documentary, Document of the Dead, you see them filming that scene. They're actually stood back a little bit like over here. They have the cameras and crew in front of them. So Peter gives a speech and he starts, you know, they have to go back and forth. Why are they here? Why are they here? And Peter says, you know, we'll go, go. Most of that, and we're actually about to go back to that hallway. Remember from the other vlog? She's tired. <laughs> She's pregnant. Oh, She's pregnant. <laughs> we're about to go up there to where their hideout was. So we're kind of sticking back so I can explore a little bit more. But I'm very excited about this to finally see this. Go through them doors.